Welcome back. So, I forgot to mention the last video where I showed you how to set up the motors and ESCs. That was the last official build and setup video. So now it's just time to fly them before we move into things like PID tuning as well as some other stuff because you have to fly them first. I have a few different purposes of this video. The majority of it will be flight footage of both of these multi-rotors in all three flight modes because I've talked about the different flight modes throughout various videos and I've tried to explain it but it's really hard to do it without just showing you. So I'm going to walk you through it as we're playing the footage. Then if you stick around till the end of the video, we're going to talk about processors and PID tuning and a bunch of other stuff. Just some general questions that you should ask yourself and you might pick up some tips and tricks. But let's just jump right into the flight footage. Okay, up first we've got the Martian 2 because the Vorm build went first in all the other videos. Martian 2 is feeling a little jealous. But this is angle flight mode. It's the easiest of all three. It's also known as self-leveling mode because that's exactly what it's doing. Uh, you're only in one half of control of it. The flight controller is in control of the other half. And it is constantly trying to level you off, even when you're just slightly turning. You also can't uh, go past a 45 degree angle. So at times you'll see me start to roll backwards or forwards or left and right, but it just stops me because it will not allow you to go past that angle. Also as I go through the three different flight modes, just take a mental note, do you think I need to tune my PIDs or not? Um, because you might be surprised with what I have to say at the end, but like I said, keep just keep a mental note. Now uh, as far as the wobblies, me wobbling left and right, forward and backward, that's not part of the, the PID tune. That is just, like I said, the flight controller doing its best to keep you level at all times. Now I'm flying in Ac or Horizon flight mode, and in this flight mode it will allow you to do flips and rolls. The catch is, uh, Horizon is a mixture of angle and acro. It mostly flies like angle until you go to do that roll or flip, and then it will go into acro for a, a second, just a split second. So uh, with that said, you can't hold it upside down, because that's more than a second. At some times, uh, you'll see me I'll try to point it out to you. Right here, I'm just taking my hand off of my transmitter to show you that it is flying just like angle flight mode, but uh, once you put your sticks more towards the ends of the gimbals, it will allow you to do that flipper roll. Okay, now we are in Acro, which is the hardest, and once again, just take a mental note, do I need to tune my PIDs or not? Uh, we really didn't see that much uh, prop wash or anything in Horizon Flight Mode, but in Acro, it, it should be a little... There it was, right there. We had a little bit of prop wash. And there's things you can do to avoid prop wash, uh, just... And right there, we didn't have any prop wash, because like I was saying, uh, to avoid that, you just keep giving it a little bit of throttle and keep it at a slight angle. You, you don't want to fly into your own uh, wind that's been, you know, your own turbulence. And you're probably noticing in acro, I can hold it upside down uh, longer than I could, or like right here, keeping it on its side. That's something you can't do in a horizon flight mode. And for this reason, th this is why, well even this too, you can't do this in Angle or Horizon, and this is why everyone who does freestyling or even uh, racing, everyone uses Acro. Now it's time for the Valorum build, starting off in Angle Flight Mode, so it's going to fly very similar, in fact exactly the same as uh, the Martian 2 in Angle Flight Mode. You're going to notice the wobbles, it's hard to keep, right there, I just tried to go, I tried to do a roll but that's as far as it will let me go. And right there, I tried to do a flip backwards, but once again, that's as far as it will let you go. And just a little tip, uh, if you are trying to practice in acro flight mode, keep all three flight modes available, because once you start losing it, kind of going out of control in acro flight mode, you can always flip your switch back to angle, and it will catch itself and go back into self-leveling mode. Okay, now we got the Vorm in Horizon flight mode. Once again, take note of the prop wash if you think the pits need to be tuned. Uh, just ask yourself, how well does this fly? And ask yourself, do you, is this good enough for you, or do you want to tune your pits to make it a little bit better?
that right there, uh, where, where I was turning to the left, that was me trying to do a roll slowly, but it, it just won't allow you. You have to be quick about it if you do want to do a roll or a flip. So it, it, once again, it's not going to let you just get that hang time upside down. So this is about how fast you can do flips and rolls. You, you can't go any slower than that. Now I've got the Vorum in acro flight mode. Not only are you trying to pay attention to the PIDs, but also pay attention to the overall flight. I did give you guys a, a punch out right there. Here comes another one, just to give you an idea of how much power you're dealing with with these motors. So that is one big difference between both of these builds. The Ready May RC rifle motors are just killer motors. I mean, I only touched the throttle for a second, and I was just it launched me way up there. And that's only on five inch props. I built this one with the six inch arms, four six inch props, but um, this right here is only five inch props. I got a little bit of prop wash right there. Here's that hang time that I was telling you, uh, trying to explain you can't do in horizon flight mode. Also notice how much smoother it is now that you're not trying to fight the flight controller. Oh, I tried to do a backwards flip past the tree and ended up hitting it. That would have looked really cool, huh? There's some more prop wash. Okay, so now you should have a better picture of what the three different flight modes are like. Uh, now what I want to talk about is just some things that you should ask yourself. From the very beginning, even when I was planning these builds, I purposely made them as different as possible. Uh, the frames are different, uh, the motors are different, we've got top of the line versus the bottom of the line. Uh, the flight controllers, on this one I put a F3 flight controller that uses I squared C, which is considered the slowest of all F3 flight controllers versus a F4 processor using SPI, which would be considered the fastest of the fast. So now ask yourself, was there that much difference between uh, acro flight mode on both of these builds? Could you visually tell a difference? I know you can't feel a difference, so I'll tell you what I felt. I felt virtually no difference. I am not a huge believer in you have to have 8K, 8K, you know. I, I think 4K, 4K works just fine. Can I tell a difference between 2K and 4K? Yes. When you compare both of these to a F1 flight controller like an Ace 32, there actually is a pretty decent difference. But to summarize, I am just fine with 4K and 4K. Now, uh, people have asked me why I haven't bought into the entire race flight hype train. If you don't know, race flight with a race flight revolt is capable of 32K and 32K. As you can guess, because uh, I am just fine with 4K, and there is virtually no difference between that and 8K, I definitely see no reason to use 32K. Now people swear up and down that the per performance of race flight is so juicy, so much better than beta flight, but it has nothing to do with 32K. It's only because the default PIDs and settings for race flight is more aggressive than beta flight. So it's kind of like halfway tuning your multi-rotor just right out the box. But all you have to do is just tune your beta flight multi-rotor and it's going to perform just as well. So you shouldn't be comparing uh, both the configurators right out the box anyway. You should be tuning them both ways because they both have to be tuned. Or they don't have to be. Uh, which is, let's talk about that. Do you have to tune your PIDs? So uh, just go back and watch my acro flight modes for either one of these multi-rotors and ask yourself, is that good enough? Personally, just me, I could fly both of these all day long with the default PIDs and it's not going to bother me one bit. So if you are someone that doesn't, you, you don't know how to tune PIDs or you don't want to, you don't have to. That, that's just my opinion. Through PID tuning you can get rid of some of the prop wash, but no matter what you do, you can't get rid of it completely. I mean that's just physics. You would be defying the laws of physics. But yes, you can get rid of some of it through pit tuning, which we will talk about once we get into pit tuning. And finally, uh, like I said, the little wobbles I was getting with angle and horizon flight modes, that's, that has nothing to do with the pids or the settings. That, that's just those flight modes. 
And oftentimes you'll come across strange flights where you think it's in the PIDs, but it's really not. For example, I'm going to show you some video of the 6 inch props that I was using on the Vorum build. Now, uh, they were are poorly balanced. I've gone through three different brands of 6 inch props trying to find one that is well balanced. But if you're, if you're buying props that don't come balanced, you either have to balance them yourself or just throw them away and find a, a different brand of prop that is well balanced. And the point of me telling you this is uh, the, the Jello video feed and the, the vibrations in the video, just in my case, that was not something with the PIDs. That was just bad props. And I know it's hard to distinguish the differences between problems you're having because of the PIDs or if it's a hardware problem, but like I said, we're going to talk more about that once we get into PID tuning. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.